we have to make it a different day. Tiana, welcome. Hi. Can we see a picture? Rui, Ruki, Ixin. Yes, sir, I can. Go ahead. Sure, hold on, I'll turn on my camera. Yeah, yeah, good, yeah. Yixin. Oh, that's much better, this one. <laughs> hold on, let me, uh, let me turn this way. Wait, mate, I can turn it this way if you'd like. That's it, that's a way. As you can see, you're like sideways. Routing. Ricky, where are you? Are you in China or you're in Bethlehem? Actually, I'm in Oregon, in my, in my home. Okay. Yixing. Oh uh, yes, sir. Okay. Where are you? I'm in China. Okay. Bring your picture up. Where's everybody else? Hold on. Let's get. Everybody. I can log in on my computer actually. What? I'm going to log in on my computer. I think it would be better. Okay, got it. Okay. You can't get into the building. Can someone help open the door? Yeah. Steven. Hold on, we're grabbing a few people. I got Randy, I got Michael. So Tiana, Tiana is looking to join the program. So I wanted to experience a little bit what's going on. Uh, Professor Zoro. Yes. Is this is this like a just a group meeting for the capstone class? Well, what this is is um, we're going to start at one thirty. Uh, right now, uh, I want we'll start with the factor modeling. Then we'll talk falling knives. Then we'll talk Ethereum. Then we'll talk EDC, and then we'll talk Inca Digital, right? So when I say we, it's the people involved in each product. Um, and for example, on, on Inca Digital, every, every two weeks, we'll connect with the sponsor. So you'll come in and, and listen to what you guys are up to. So we'll... So remember, remember in the summertime, you know, you had those calls, those different calls from these people. We'll bring them all today on this call, on, on this afternoon, because I know you're all free at that time. So A, you get to see what other people are working on. Because I, I don't want, I wanted to, to make sure you guys don't think, oh, this is a capstone and I'm done. No, there's like six projects going on. And then maybe you have, could add seven with Ping Me, right? So I want you to, do your thing, your capstone, but I want you to make sure you understand the other opportunities you have because once you're done with your capstone, either this semester or next, you know, you have all these other things going on that you should try to dip into it as much as you can. Right? I got a guy like Ramos who's been on this past year, right? So I want him to be, he's aware of all these things that are happening. And at some point, maybe he say, hey, I want to do this instead of that. I want to do both. Um, you know, there's, there's more than way to skin this thing. But don't think of it as very rigid. You come in, you do your capstone, you get out. 
That's not like that. The capstone already started for some of you. I know Mike, Michael, Ramos, so he's not even in the program. Randy, uh, I've already started working on, on, on their capstone or their project. But then when it's over, I would like Randy and maybe Mike and some of you to maybe work with um, uh, Inca Digital, for example, right? Even though you're not, it's not going to be a capstone because you create, I mean, you guys saw today the call with Mike, right? With the uh, pygmy, right? Mike and Michael. Um, I mean, these are startup, uh, you know, startup companies. They're looking for people. They need to know you exist, right? So if I say, hey, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Kate? No, Mike is graduated and he's looking for a job. Uh, do you know anyone? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, because you've seen what you've done. It's a lot easier. I mean, you literally get an interview into their own home, right? You want to take that opportunity. Don't think so much in terms of the grade and the thing because, uh, yeah, you'll get the grade. That's not the point. The point is you need to get the right job. So I want to expose you as much as possible. Like Mozilla definitely has to work with these people, right? They've got lots of contact with Sal. I'm talking about Pygmy. So they, yeah. I mean, you may not do much because you, you're doing two other projects. So I don't want you to do three projects, but it's going to take a while before we develop that one to really understand what they're looking for. And then you get to pick what you want. Maybe you do a little bit of things and you split it around a little bit, but they have a lot of, a lot of stuff going on here. Okay. So, what else do I have? Yig seen, you guys see the screen. The thing is, uh, where's Brian? He's right here. Can you connect? Well, because if you're going to be talking, I don't think they're going to be able to hear you. Oh, but wait. So how do we fix this? Oh, that's exactly what you're going to do. In fact, why don't we start right now? In fact, you know what? You're right. You're right. That's a... Well, uh, I don't know. Factor modeling, because at two o'clock, we, uh, we got people from Falling Knives. So why don't you give you guys come up and for 20 minutes. Randy is here. Let me get out. Away. You take this. So tell them about your project, what you're working on, and uh, I'll let Jordan start. Go. I'll start off. I'll introduce this and I'll get yeah. that more Absolutely. I'll go into a little more technical stuff. Um, hi, guys. Can you guys see us? Yeah. yeah you can, see, can you hear us? All right, perfect. So uh, just to dive in, this is a new research project. Um, I remember I was joining over the summer, so I'm a new MFE student, and I had a really big interest in kind of a new way of like quantum mental investing, which is kind of like taking a fundamental analysis and performing a quantitative approach on it, as opposed to just more of a quantitative technical investment opportunity. So I reached out to Professor Zorro, and we essentially uh, developed the project into more of portfolio construction, but multi-factor investments. So it's essentially, there's a lot of different factors that go into an, um, an investment decision, uh, how liquid it is, how liquid it is, um, is it undervalued or overvalued, um, the quality of it, if there's strong momentum, different factors. And so we're taking essentially an idea where uh, Brad's going to talk about the neural network, and then uh, Randy can talk about the optimization. But we're te uh, essentially taking a strategy utilizing factor investment to construct a portfolio that should optimize our sharp ratio and information ratio, which is generating excess returns to our benchmark given a set level of risk. So the whole idea is really an investment analysis approach using uh, neural networks, machine learning, and optimization techniques to kind of optimize um, our risk and return. So I'll hand it off now. I'll talk a little bit about the technical stuff here. Um, so in essence, the three of us are going to kind of develop a feedback loop, right? So Jordan will uh, kind of tackle what to do, what factors are best at predicting returns. Um, and to not to get into too granular of, of the information, but uh, in essence, we kind of need to decide, do we want to take a top-down approach or a bottom-up approach? In other words, do you want to pick certain assets? model them individually and then combine the information or do we want to kind of make um an umbrella function that kind of can take any asset do whatever it 
do whatever it needs to do, and then move that into kind of optimizing weights within the portfolio. And so, um, so my job is going to be forecasting um, using machine learning techniques, um, potential returns of certain assets. Um, and the, the idea here is we start small and then you big your, build your system up. So you pick five and small number of, let's say, blue chips. You do your machine learning. You, you, get, you get that. You get those models working um, very well. Um, you pass those forecasted data sets over to Randy. Um, and then Randy uh, will use also modern optimization techniques, not just an efficient frontier, um, but some of the more cutting edge uh, 21st century uh, models that are being um, implemented on Wall Street today. Um, and I'll let him talk about sort of what that looks like. Yeah, so after Brian uses the, his machine learning techniques to uh, estimate the uh, returns, uh, I will then take what he gives me and I'll look at the covariance matrix. And using a modern optimization techniques, I will determine the actual weights uh, in the composition of the portfolio. And there's a bunch of different techniques we can use. And some of the more popular ones and more, some of the newer ones are some machine learning techniques, like a nested clustered optimization. And they have proven to be better than some of the old ones. Um, and so like, for example, we will use this method to maximize the Sharpe ratio. And that will give us the like optimal ways um, for each security in the portfolio. And uh, yeah, and this will be like a continual process. So after we do this, we will also have to uh, rebalance the portfolio. And uh, we will also have to like go in a loop. So I'll report back to Jordan. And this is going to be like a continual process. I think it's an important thing to capture is the idea that it's, it's a constant loop. Um, you don't just go through, you don't just go through the motion once, right? So once Randy has some information, it doesn't work great. Um, it comes back to my desk. I figure out how to work the network a certain way. And then maybe I'll go back to Jordan and say, hey, maybe for tech stocks, certain factors are performing the way we, we wanted them. What else, what else do we have out there? Um, and vice versa. So that's kind of where we're going with that project. Can you talk about the survey that we talked about with Manish? Sure. Yes. Yeah, so the literature survey. Yeah. Yeah, so um, essentially uh, we're doing it with someone named, the project sponsor is uh, Manish. He does moderate risk at BMP. He's been very helpful. He, the first step, so to make sure we're not research intensive, um, which it very well can be, we're just doing a large amount of preliminary research before we begin because it's a lot of, it's very technical, quantitative strategies, fundamental strategies, neural networks, optimization. So he gave us um, a large literature survey. So we're using Axioma, MSCI, um, a couple books, uh, like a textbooks. There's one called uh, Risk Analysis by Lisa Goldberg. Um, another one is Machine Learning for Asset Managers. So, so far, it's been a lot of reading uh, publications. A lot of them come from the University of Chicago. Um, it's uh, based off Farmer French, which is a popular one from like the 1900s. Um, it's really a lot of dissertations that we've been reading, ranging between like 10 and 25 pages, along with uh, three textbooks as of now that we've kind of been like highlighting certain chapters that we've been using. And I, if I can chime in and add one more thing here, um, the survey is important because it's important to understand how this type of quantitative modeling has kind of changed since it first came to Wall Street back in sort of the 70s, the 80s, um, some heavier computing power arrived in the 90s. So that's where kind of ordinary least squares, typical linear regression um, was able to capture some kind of alpha. Um, and nowadays with such powerful computers, uh, and ready to go machine learning packages, right? You can just quickly install something on Python, um, feed your data in and run a neural network and you have a pretty powerful um, prediction model, right? So unboxing, so the term, the term that is referred to is kind of unboxing the black box behind machine learning. Um, in other words, what does all these things mean um, rather than just spitting out numbers? And that's, that's important to understand. And that's why we're doing all this reading, historical reading, present, uh, it's kind of cutting edge, present day, um, information that's coming out and publications to kind of understand what is really behind these black boxes. Any questions? Can they hear me? Uh, yeah, they heard you, I think. Um, any questions? Um, hey, Yixin, can you hear me? Can you put the camera on and you are and uh, thank Z1, put your camera on. Sorry, sir, my connection is on and off, so I can hear it clearly. Hi, Aaron. Yeah. 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 Yeah
saying, I want to see, we need to see what, uh, what you, you know, we need to see you. Thank you. Okay, so how does it, how is it working with um, uh, Professor, uh, what's his last name? Uh, it starts with a C. Uh, yeah. I'm going like, to mispronounce Kakrabati. it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So how is it, I mean, you only work with Professor Kakrabati, right? We're meeting with him once every month. So far, yes. Yes. Okay, so the idea with him is uh, when we we'll meet him, we'll, I'll schedule the call for this afternoon, I mean, this afternoon, mm -hmm. but, uh, around this period, so you don't have to rush around too much. Um, uh, what, you know, you have to uh, get used to presenting because I think I want to use that at the conference. Um, that's in September. I think it's interesting stuff. Uh, I mean, yes, you'll do it for the for the capstone, but I think we want to get some exposure at least. Mm -hmm. um, make sure you have, you update your, uh, your your LinkedIn page, you know, your CV with this. I mean, you, you're working on it, so you have to finish it because you may not finish for a long, long. So we get we get a little bit more mileage out of that. Um, how's it working with the three of you? Do you because some other people wanted to join in, and I said, "Well, I don't know, because then you got to split the work." Mm -hmm. then... Yeah. So so far, I remember I was reaching out to Randy, Brian, and uh, you, and a little yeah. bit of Manish. And uh, the way we've seen it is that we're afraid because this is the first half or the first third. I would say is very research intensive. It's not just like get in there, like like for example with the falling knives. Um, I worked on it over the summer, and it was like different techniques. It was like get in there, kind of explore different data analysis, just like test it out. But we've been seeing that this is a lot more like heavy preliminary research into certain areas. I've been doing the strategy and factors. Brian's been doing machine learning neural networks and Randy's been doing optimization, but we're all getting a foundation in all of it. So as we reached out to other, um, a couple members that wanted to join, we um, mentioned that um, we're always open to like having new members, but it's the idea that this is going to be very hands-on, very time intensive. So if you're working on other projects or if you're not really focusing on this one because you have other things going on, uh, we found that like the smaller groups, I mean, again, like I said, it, it, like we're open to bigger groups, but smaller groups are able to focus because there's more responsibility given to each member that falls on you. And I guess this is not, let me chime in as well. Um, there kind of needs to have, there, um, we all have the mathematics, but intensive coding background, there's going to be a lot of coding um, and there's going to be a good amount of complex mathematical understanding. Um, not just basic calculus. This is like linear mappings, linear algebra, um, differential equations. There's going to be a lot of that to kind of unbox the, the black box, as I described. What I'd be curious to see is once you start going to the core, I mean, I'm assuming you started right in this week, right? With what? With, uh, some of your curriculum. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm curious to see how does this jive, right? How does this, how does this chime in with what you're doing? And do you, do you feel like... <laughs> I, I wish I knew this already, as opposed to, or you're forcing yourself to learn it. And, and I mean, yeah. you'll see when you, mm. you get around, because that's that's a question that I have is, I can, how does it, I guess it all depends on the character of the person, right? Mm -hmm. Some people would be more comfortable. Let me learn first before I get into it, because I don't know it. Yeah. But then you miss the opportunity to. I can kind of chime in on that. And Metzella, I'm going to ask you to chime in, because you and I have spoken about this a little bit. Um, so this uses, so at least as Manish recommended, we use the powerful capabilities of neural networks. Um, and I don't know the curriculum at the it back does. of my hand, but complex machine learning, um, and especially not just basic ordinary least squares, but specifically time series regression, and time series analysis isn't really introduced in the curriculum um, until I think you might have an option to take intro to machine learning for the data science um, yeah. certificate, right? Yeah, but that yeah, so that at some point could be introduced, but that's over here, I guess. Um, I personally spent hours reading through like 30, 40 page dissertations on neural networks to figure out how this all works. Um, and then I have to kind of reach out to my own connections to see, to, for people who do this kind of stuff to figure out how this all works. So it yeah. would be nice to kind of have a class theoretically that you could just walk yeah, in. I and think when stuff. you go through this process, you have to let me know that so you know mm -hmm. how because what they're telling me on the other side is, well, hold on, why don't you wait for them to get the course? And then you, but I said, well, first of all, you know, it's not that black and white, right? I mean, yeah, you, this stuff that you know, stuff you don't know, 
But if I wait until you learn it, well, Manish might not be available. I don't know what he's mm -hmm. doing, right? He's going to go away at some point. He's going to do something else. He's going to start his own company. So then you miss the opportunity. It's almost impossible to match exactly. What I could do is if you say that, hey, I need this, it's always possible. And I think the guy like Mozilla is taking courses from, uh, what's his name, uh, Encore, mm -hmm. yeah. even though he's not, it's going to force you to do that where, you know what, I'm not, it's not my career, can I sit in your class at least to, maybe that's the way to do it as well. I'm, uh, if you have a need for that, in addition for me to add it to the curriculum, but we could add so many things, uh, because at some point what I want to do is I want to create uh, courses that tie ex uh, exactly what you need. Mm -hmm. As opposed to right now, we're grabbing some courses from engineering and some math that are taken by math students and by engineering students. We want to combine it so that maybe we do neural networks, plus this, plus that, plus that in one course. So get me some feedback in terms of, I wish I, I knew all these things. Mm -hmm. A, I could get you into the classroom. Yeah. If you have a, an afternoon or whatever, mm -hmm. I say, well, you know, they're teaching that there and it's okay for you to sit in. It could help you. Yeah. Or not. We'll but definitely. You want to take as much, especially you. You do mm -hmm. it this thing in one year, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. we got a. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. All right. So um, you are the, are you there? You are done? You are. Okay, next, what we're going to, oh, by the way, today is Friday. Make sure if you're on the class that you send me the, um, you send me your um, one pager. I gave you some on course site, um, what it's supposed to look like. I need to see something today. Um, in seven minutes exactly, we're gonna have we're going to talk about falling knives. So who do we have on falling knives here? Got Ramos, Mike, you is falling knives. I think there's supposed to be a couple undergrad, but I'm not sure if they're in this call. Yeah, but I think a lot of people pick, uh, I Chang, did you pick falling knives? Yes. Okay. Uh, Steven, no, you didn't. Okay. Okay. So this, they're going to come in with, uh, maybe the, the people that are working that are managing their capstone. And I think what you guys, I don't want to do all the talking here. Okay. You're going to need to, um, um, they're going to tell you a little bit what they want to do. And then what you guys are intending on doing, because they, they're more on the, on the implementation, on the database and on the interface, somehow, first of all, find out who they are and they're gonna find out who you are. Then after this call, you wanna connect with them a little bit to find out, okay, how do we work together? And based on what you're giving me in terms of what you wanna do, we need to see how we could work with, these, with them, right? For them, it's a capstone. So they are mostly programmers, really. Uh, database programmers and whatever. So you need to have a vision in terms of where you want to take it and how it's going to fit into their program. Now, the issue that I have with, um, because um, we lost our sponsor, we need to find a new sponsor for this program. Um, someone that, that we could connect to with the outside. Um, but it's going to be a lot easier to do once I have a, a, a better product. Okay. So the way it's going to work is at two, we're going to talk about this at two 30. We'll talk about uh, Ethereum. Now they have agreed to talk. You're still on that one, right? Okay. They have agreed. Um, uh, or before I go further, in case it becomes too much and I tend to do that, don't worry because you don't have to finish your capstone in one semester. We could push it off. Okay. So 
don't get stressed out with, I got to get it done because you don't even know what you're working on most of the time or how it's going to develop. So you're going to have time. So at 2.30 Ethereum. So I spoke to Elizabeth. Uh, she says she's okay on Fridays, not every Friday, maybe every two weeks. So one week might be light. And then the week after we get on the phone, like we're going to get these guys on the phone. Um, then at three o'clock, I'm thinking AEGC. I don't have a confirmation. Inca Digital said that they would listen to us at 3.30. Um, and then I have no more time. So um, now if somehow Ping, Ping Me becomes a product, I'm going to have to fit it between 1 and 1.30, even though the course starts at 1.35. But, um, and I think with six projects, uh, that's plenty. Now, the reason why, you know, uh, Randy and Mike and Jack and Yua and Kai and, and Z1 want to hear about it is because you might be interested in the project away from the capstone. What do you think about that, Z1? Think about about what I just about, said. About what I just said. Yeah. Think. Think I didn't hear it clearly. Can you hear? <coughs> Can you hear me? Can you hear me? No, 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 no. Now I can hear you. Okay, good. So at. Uh, in two minutes, we'll have the people from um, computer science joining us. So let's just wait a second. Now, keep in mind that this is kind of a review and you can see what else we're working on and whatever else. Then you, 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 know, you need to work on your own as well, separately. I will work, work as separately. Yeah, separate away from this class by yourself or with other people. Okay, okay I got you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, who is in, who is in China right now? Because I know some of you are, uh, couldn't come back. You are, you, you're here, right? All right, Kai and Kian Kai, I think they're from, from last year's program. I don't, I don't think Kai's with us anymore. He hasn't shown up in any meetings or contributed but, anything. No, but I'm talking about, oh, no, not Kai. Kai? What do you, how do you pronounce Q-I? Oh, Key. Key. <laughs> Steven, you know, tell me. I mean, I look like a, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, Kai is in Philadelphia, actually. Yeah. So, um, hopefully, okay, what do we have here? Pro 3. Okay, see you. All right. So, um, so who do we have for falling now? So I know. So Ramos, uh, Mike, that's two. Axel. Uh, who else? There were like 16 people on that thing. Me. Okay. So I want you to, Kian, what's the matter? Um, so let's see what they're going to describe a little bit what they're doing and then you're going to describe what you want to do a little bit. Don't forget you have 30 minutes so then we need to move on to uh, Ethereum. Okay, well then. Okay, uh, Zane says okay, 2.30 on uh, Friday. Starting next Friday, you Yeah, I don't think I want to have them every week. I mean, no, no, no. every two weeks, just. Nicholas is here, okay. So Nicola and uh, Isabel, um, they are part of the, um, the new Ramos already. You guys met last semester. And uh, so they are working, they are the CSB team working on the folding knives part of 
the CNs be part of the following night. So guys, we have about 30 minutes. So why don't you tell the, the groups, not uh, a little bit what it is that uh, you guys did last semester and what you intend on accomplishing this semester. And then the team here will talk about on their side and we see how we could, uh, maybe not during this call, but uh, separate calls, you guys get together and um, see what the match. Nick, Isabel, Ryan, up to you. Uh, okay, yeah, last semester we basically just um, implemented, we had built a database with um, over 600 uh, companies, primarily in the S&P 500. Um, and we basically, the user would specify like um, how much a stock would drop and like uh, a time period, two days basically. And if, this, if any of the stocks fell by that amount during that period, um, they would basically appear. And then um, this semester we plan on um, importing more data into the database and basically having it so using like machine learning techniques. Um, we basically want to predict the chances of a certain stock becoming a falling knife using like stock, other similar stock profiles. And I guess also the, some of the MFE students from last semester had made some, had worked on some uh, models and that's also another um, type of profile that we also plan on implementing this semester as in addition to the simple uh, percent fall. Okay. Um, Who do we have on the other side? Ramos? Yes, I'm here. So, um, so last semester, um, the MFE group is mostly focusing on how to identify a falling knife and then also just kind of building the, um, the database that we, uh, that we're in intent to use in the future. And then, uh, over the summer we have, we have achieved a lot with, um, just kind of like building a kind of like a user interface that, um, whoever's using it can select different type of criteria to identify what a falling knife is. And, but mostly our approach are uh, technical analysis instead of a fundamental approach. So I am kind of just working with a bunch of undergrads and people that just knew joining in to look at the program, uh, to look at the whole project again in a different approach, uh, possibly in like fundamental, fundamental analysis or other qualitative um, other qualitative information to implement it to this. Uh, so far, we haven't been in the stage of uh, predicting. So right now, it's just kind of like consolidating what we have had uh, for last semester and also over the summer. And Mike. we're gonna move forward soon. Okay, let's hear from Mike what he's thinking of what he wants to do in this project. Yeah, so, um... Going back to what you said, Ramos, in regard to the more qualitative analysis um, versus like more fundamental approach, I was thinking that some ratios we could implement um, was maybe the short float, float ratio. And I know we were also talking about future profitability because even if the technical analysis indicators show that um, a certain company is a falling knife, if they don't have any future profitability, then it could be a concern for the future. Um, we could also look at the beta in terms of um, the volatility, because if a certain security is more volatile, it may be more difficult to kind of predict price movements. And then I was also thinking we could look at the enterprise to book value ratio. And in terms of fundam fundamental analysis, I figured uh, we could look at investor sentiment, but um, I'm still kind of having some trouble on how we would actually quantify that. Yeah, and also just uh, add on to that, we're also looking, so Mike uh, kind of introduced a lot of uh, fundamental approach. Uh, also, people are talking about, um, wait, you said short flow, is it? Yeah, short flow. 
Yeah, and then also uh, me and uh, two other undergrads, we're looking at put in call ratio and that could be one of the factor to look at the falling knives too. And that's basically what we're looking at. Ao Cheng. Yes. So what, what, what do you think you want to do in there? Uh, well, personally, I, I think like uh, for some stocks, they have like earnings reports quarterly and uh, yearly uh, there will be like large movements of the stock price before or after the, the earnings reports came up. So like uh, I was thinking about how we can like quantify the, this, this sort of relative, relevant news uh, around the dates of the earnings report. So like we can uh, better predict the 40 lives events during this date. Uh, and, and, and also I, I was thinking about uh, the, the flow of funds holding by uh, large holder companies or uh, institutional holders. So like, uh, like sometimes they maybe uh, don't break the, uh, the stock. So like this can cause some panic uh, in the stock market. And yeah, that's pretty much what I'm thinking about this project right now. Anyone else that's, that's um, on that page and that, that's also on the project from the MFE side? I'm, I'm sorry, what's that? Oh. Is anyone else? I mean, is I know you is, but he's not. He's not responding. Anybody else that's on registered for this um, capstone? Besides you. Me. Okay. I think Kieran is in this, but. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm in this project. Okay. okay. So what do you what do you uh, what do you want to do in there? What what's your angle? Uh, actually. I, I, I tried to find the mass model in the Google Drive, but I didn't find any like research paper or something I can read about that. But actually, someone told me there is a mass model, and uh, I will try to learn that. And, uh, and for uh, after the mass model is built, it, it's built, and we need to do some like regression analysis for that because mm -hmm. I have some like uh, coding skills a little bit. And I will try to do that by Python. And okay. So what I think you guys need to do, you need to, uh, uh, and it's on the on, on the group me, but you need to talk to each other a little bit in terms of how you're going to accomplish all this. Because, I mean, it looks to me like you're still in the research stage as to what is this thing supposed to look like. Um, and then you you need to get to the algorithm stage because the the undergraduate people really can't do anything until you give them. Right, uh, Ryan and uh, Nick and uh, Isabel. Right. What What do you want them to give you ultimately? I, I'm not sure. Yeah. So, so what Professor Zora was saying that like, uh, so right now I'm taking the uh, technical analysis approach. Uh, How Chen is doing more of a um, kind of like a qualitative news, and then we have Mike doing a little bit of fundamental approach but we got to talk to each other and I think it will be good to kind of uh, create either like a Google docs and share with people, put in our drive or kind of just send a one pager, even just a half page, kind of just like talking about what is this? Why do you think it's useful? What do you think it can be put in use? And also what do you need help with the undergraduate, like people that's doing a lot of coding. And uh, if you have any like formula or kind of explanation, uh, that's a little bit complex. You can also send a link to it, but we just got to make sure that we all, even though we're all doing individual research, we still got to talk to each other and make sure this is going. Okay. <clears throat> you are. Are you there now? Can you hear me? You are. Dong. Oh, you mean Hua Dong? Hodong, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think Hua is here. He's here because he's just texting me. Hmm. Uh, Hua, he was in uh, this uh, falling knife 
before uh, for the false. I know he was he was a, he was a, in part of the original team, so I wanted him to tell us a little bit more about. So while he's uh, getting his thoughts together, why don't uh, Nick and Ryan and Isabel? So what do you guys? Because at some point we need to give you something. What is this something supposed to look like as far as you're concerned? Um, it is supposed to be like a detailed description of what like the algorithm is. It's, it can't just be like a, like a high level. It has to be like a very detailed like explanation, almost like a, like a flow chart of what like exactly the steps of the algorithm is, the steps of the algorithms are. I think Ramos should have like the, the one from last year. I and do. so like, he could probably send that out as examples of what like we would need, but it, but yeah, that's, that's basically. Do you yeah. mean the, do you mean the memo that we sent out to tell you yeah, guys what yeah. to do? Okay. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so the, the, the kind of like the big problem from last year is that um, we have an envision of like what we want uh, from the finance side, but uh, some computer engine, uh, computer engineering might not understand like what exactly we want to build. So we kind of need to have a detail or like kind of just like draw out an example of like what we want to implement it in it. So it's uh, less confusion, uh, more connection between the two teams. Are they aware of like what we currently have set up like yes. with the database? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So any algorithms that like fit within that database, like, just give us like detailed ways of how to do that because what we would do then is we would take those algorithms and using that database uh, find them so we need yeah we need like we need like basically like step by step of like how this algorithm is uh, calculated so that we can uh, utilize it research what yeah I'm running it down what wow, what um, do you say what huh? go on can you say, tell us a little bit of the history and what you intend to do going forward? Research. Okay, so this is where you know, where you guys are, where, I mean, not, you're not there, but essentially everybody is here right now on the MFE side, right? And the CSV is on this side. So, okay, we'll spend, a, I don't know, um, because keep in mind that these guys and, 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 and um, Isabel, um, this for them, it's a one quarter capstone. So they got to be done. When do you guys would like to have this thing in your hands? the actual algorithm uh i mean sooner rather than later but like yes it, it, <laughs> as soon as you can get it to us just send it to us because like we also have to implement stuff on our side as well so the sooner we can get that implemented we can also in addition make it so that when we're implementing our stuff like our machine learning and our ui that we can add that stuff in as we go rather than having to like append it at the end, if that uh, makes sense. Do you, yeah. uh, Nico and Michael, do you guys see the, the Python model, the other undergraduate students in the summer built? Have you guys seen that yet? No, I haven't. I don't believe we have. Okay, so I'm gonna give you uh, some context and then maybe uh, you two, like you guys can connect and probably like kind of just merge what right. teams have mm -hmm. it. So, I mean, the way it feels to me is, all right, so Ramos and the other three uh, will, will, will either quantitatively or, um, or fundamental um, aspect of it will design, will, will come up with a research as to what they think works. And I mean, you're not gonna get the perfect thing, right? So right. that's not for ourselves right now. So you're gonna come up with something you need to make it look the way they want it to look like with the for the algorithm and then give them quote unquote something so that they could start working on it. Right. Right. So that uh, they couldn't, because at the end they need, they need to implement it. So, and they're not going to be graded as to whether or not they could predict the next falling knives. 
right? Let's be honest here. They're going to be they're going to be graded on how they implement this thing inside the uh, inside the database. So um, so the sooner we give them something, and then but once you give it to them, it doesn't mean that you can't go back because yours will be a different kind of. Um, uh, we'll judge you in a different way. Then you could go back in your research and, and try to tweak it and make it more real while they're working on whatever you gave them. Maybe it could be a draft. What do you think? Mike, what do you think? No, yeah, I mean, uh, are you talking to other Michael or Matt? Yeah, which... Michael, I, I, I have Michael, I, I, my, uh, Michael Nelson, right? Uh, Levinson, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, that, that seems like it could work, just sending us, like, draft work. We just need, like, I say, I say like, follow the model of uh, the, old, uh, the old memo that uh, Ramo sent to us uh, last year. I think, like, definitely send that to anyone who's working on the algorithms and just have them follow that uh, model when they're doing it, because, like, I think that's a, that's probably the best way to do it. So, for example, it's a guy like Wiki Tang, right? Um, so, you know, make sure you work with Ramos and Mike, and um, Xang Su to make sure that at this stage you're looking and you're looking for a um, uh, an algorithm some version of an algorithm that might or might not work ultimately, right? So that they could start implementing it. That is your first, um, your first business. That's your first goal right now to get that. Because the challenge that you have is that you don't have all the time in the world to just research and take your time like last year, because they need something they could start implementing right away. Now, Michael, how is it difficult for you then if they come back two weeks later with something else to, mm -hmm re-implement it. Hi, Professor, can you hear me? Yes, I could hear you. Oh, I'm sorry, because my internet is not stable today here, so I okay. reset my, my internet. Can you hear us? Yeah, sure. Okay, do you heard everything that we were talking about? Well, I, 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 I test some algorithms um, during the summer. Um, my opinion is that uh, the algorithm will depend on the data structure, if our data Is he breaking up for everyone or just me? No, he's breaking up. I think. Yeah, breaking up for me too. Okay. Right. All uh, well <laughs> breaking out. Okay, I guess while well, we're getting that result, um, on that question that you asked, um, what were our plan like going forward is, and correct me if I make any mistakes, uh, other, like Ryan or Nicholas, or Isabel, um, what we're probably gonna do is we're gonna implement like a simple UI for it, and then we're going to, after we implement that simple UI, we're going to start throwing things into the machine learning program to see if we can get predictive values. And so around that time, it's probably the time where we would go ahead. around that start again can you start again go ahead oh yeah so our plan going forward is probably to implement a simple ui for the program just to interact with it and then once we get that done we're probably going to start tossing numbers into the machine learning program the numbers that we have and in that point we would start tossing in also the algorithms that you have and what they uh, lead to and from that, we would try to make a predictive model. So we probably want to get everything around the time at the very, at the latest, by the time we start implementing machine learning, that would probably be the best. And I, so if there is going to be changes, like it would, I wouldn't say it would be difficult. We just have to toss more stuff into it. But around the time that we start implementing the machine learning fully is probably the time we would want to get all those algorithms uh, done. When is that? When is that? Probably. How how long do you think it will take us to make the UI, guys? Uh, I, I'd say probably like. It's not really a hard deadline right now. It depends on it. It 
it depends on how long it takes us to make the UI and to implement the algorithms from last semester. After we finish that, if we don't have other algorithms like that we need to implement, then we would start on the machine learning. If, yeah. if we had new stuff, then we would implement that first. But yeah. I We'd probably know. give you like a warning on when we're starting to get done with the UI or when we're about to be done with it. Like how long it would probably take once we get closer to that point at which we're like confident with it. And by that point, that's the point where you're going to have to start sending us like new algorithms and stuff like that. So Ramos, Mike, Rookie, um, and uh, Aukchen, how long do you think it takes you to get your thoughts together in terms of research side? And then let's suppose you have an idea. How long does it, does it take you to put it in a format where they can use, that they can use? Using the, what, we, what, you, uh, what Ramos did last year. Let's say today you had, you knew what a falling knife is and you know exactly what to do with it. How long does it take you to get, put something together for these guys so that they could use it? Um, with everything going on, I think uh, a week and a half, two weeks at most. What does it look like at the end of the day? What, what, it, what does it look like? Is it, a, is, it a, is it a written document? Is it an actual... Um, Yeah, we, we're gonna we're gonna write it down and then just kind of like put a uh, like a, a page or two memo showing like the example of what we need and why this is useful and all the yeah. just provide all the information to the CSB side. Okay, so the so all four of you, your goal and including uh, why well, he's not here anymore. Well, five of you, your goal is to get this thing, you know, together. I mean, your thoughts first on the research, and then shortly after that, boom, and then and then let them work on it, and then you could go back. Right, because that's kind of what your thing is with your algorithm at the end of the day. You want to find the perfect one. They don't need the perfect one to keep going. Yeah. But I don't want what happened last year where basically we kind of held it off and were thinking back and forth. Meanwhile, they, they didn't get it. Yeah. And as a side note, if you have like an algorithm that you have and it's like finalized and you're confident about it and you have the whole thing written up, uh, send it to us as soon as possible. Like, don't like delay it until like we say, okay, we're almost finished with the UI. If you have something, you should send it to us. Just send it to us like immediately. And if we don't make mention of like receiving it, just tell us in one yeah. of these meetings. So the MFE team, what you need to do, you need to split the work or you need to do individual work uh, on your own, right? To come up with the better one or the best one, or maybe you all work on the same one, but you need to start talking to each other. And I want to see that in your uh, one pager for today. So I, I, I see, I, I, I get a feel as to what you're going to be working on exactly. I mean, real key had some interesting concept there. And I want to make sure he's got the chance to implement it. I don't want to go off topic, but I see like in this yep. call, there's like 20 participants. Uh, yep. I'm assuming this is like your whole grad student class. Uh, which are the ones that are going to be uh, working on this project? Well, um, I mean, uh, Rookie, could you raise your hand so that he, he knows who, who to look for? So Mike, Rookie, you're there, right? Yeah. Raise your hand if you, right? Mm -hmm. Mike, Rookie. Are you, yeah, Rookie is Ramos, obviously, that you know. Who else is on the, oh, uh, Ao Cheng Su, Zi Wang. Are you, on the, yeah. are you on the falling knife also? Yeah. What, what are you going to be doing there? I just had a talk with Hao Chen and I think about the data collections there because I thought you are doing this pro doing this steps. But now I heard about that more about the UI and algorithm. So I'm, I'm just a little confused, but I, at first I think about the, like, mm, so, because, uh, um, yeah, currently we have a, a, a database with, I believe, all the Fortune 500 companies uh, with all like the information related to stocks like high, low and a lot of other things like volume and stuff like that. Currently, we already have that. Um, the UI and the machine learning, that's on our side. That's just stuff we're implementing to uh, get the get the values that we want. With the machine learning, we're going to take your algorithms, we're going to take uh, the values that we have and basically create profiles uh, to predict in 
like fields, like for example, <laughs> like uh, the field of uh, engineering or the field of uh, computers or the field of, uh, let's say, truck delivery. And based on those, we're going to create profiles for companies to predict is there going to be, is this falling knife that this company is currently having, is it going to recover? That's basically the end goal of the, the product, uh, the project essentially. Uh, um, but on your end, what we, you would want to focus on right now is just getting algorithms to predict those falling knives and just sending it to us so that when we get to that machine learning step, we can use those to create those profiles for those uh, company types. Does okay. that make a little bit more sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, guys, thank you very much for your time. I mean, we are, we, um, are 30 minutes up. We want to move on to the next project. So they'll be in touch with you and they know what to do. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Hey, um, do you see, um, you see what I see there? Ethereum? Ramos, you see the, the I, am I sharing this right screen here? No, you're sharing the, the drawing pad. Oh, no. All right, so we're going to hear about the Ethereum now to see what these guys are doing. So who's on Ethereum? Ah, you're going to come over here and tell us all about Ethereum, which, oh, and Yaron is here too. Hold on. So um, for those that are not aware, this is what we're talking about, right? Specific project, well-defined goal project sponsor. All right, so I'm gonna let you come over here and talk about, you could send right here, you got, you could see you, don't touch anything, obviously. Okay. They could hear you, so talk about. So this is, uh, this is a three stage project. And for the first, uh, so Masila, please feel free to chat me if you want to, because I know you did a lot of the work on this project, so please, uh, add something on my what I said. So this is a three uh, stage project. And in the first stage, we are trying to um, get retrieve the data from the blockchain and figure out how the blockchain works. Like, so we have done this for the past uh, summer and we've, we successfully get the data. So in the second stage, we are in the stage where we are trying to deal with, with this data and build a data ana analysis. analysis. Size, maybe less. <laughs> Do a data analysis. Take your time. Oh, okay. So in the second stage, we are trying to build a data analyzer, and to do so, um, we are splitting the work to three people. Mozilla is doing is doing doing some res, uh, research into this part and did a lot, read a lot of articles and trying to figure out how that works. And Brian is trying to do that with, with the machine learning tools, like the one he is using in the vector, vector the, the, the first project. And I'm trying to uh, do that in the same way, like building a uh, model to predict the, the, uh, the token's price. And also, um, and Zane, who is our sponsor, uh, provide the idea that we can build a, a Python library which is easy, which can be easy to installed and for other people to use. So I think we can start with uh, doing some basic basic analysis, like some comparative analysis, analysis and put them together to create a library. And then we can start from there. And the third stage is more easier comparing to the first two stage, which is uh, building a UI or inter person interface, which can be interact with the user and do some research or something like that. <laughs> so this basically the project we are doing. Yeah, just to, just to chime in there um, on, on what Stephen has just said, I think everything is clear. Um, I think it just uh, goes down to using the very same method that uh, Brian and that they mentioned initially that there's a lot of basic research at the, at the butt on that you have to do to pretty much understand what you're doing, specifically on the blockchain side, because this is this provides a different way of actually interacting with of, of financial architecture pretty much. And I think uh, you have to understand pretty much on the basal level what it is that is happening 
and which is what we pretty much were doing, how to, how to actually access the data from like uh, Google BigQuery, um, what do you use, which APIs do you use to actually interact with this data? And then from that, you have to understand what is this data, which is where the research comes in, right? Um, what are you saying? Because you're looking at smart contracts, but what does it mean? How do you actually, how do you actually characterize those? So that's that's pretty much what we've been going through. So what, what I've been, just to spin off what I've been actually, what I've come across as well is just being able to characterize the these these tokens or the crypto assets, which is a very big thing that one of our sponsors shared with us uh, on our last meeting that there's a lot of hedge funds that are actually tapping into this. So that's, I believe that's where we're going through the machine learning and uh, that Stephen has talked about. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so since Brian's not here, so, so oh. why, I mean, Brian, hey, uh, Misala, is there a way you could move your microphones because you, you're really like, Am I still not clear? That's it. <laughs> all right, oh, all right. My oh. apologies. I hope. Yeah, I was just saying. I was just reiterating pretty much what Stephen was saying. To be honest, uh, the gist of it was we did a lot of research to understand the architecture, which is one of the reasons why I found it interesting to just sit in and drop Hank's class because I thought it would just give me some basic level understanding of the architecture underlying the blockchain and then therefore spin off from what the contracts, uh, what interesting exploratory data analysis we can get from the contracts, which can then be fed into the machine learning algorithms and stuff like that. But why, why, is, why is this such a very important project? Excuse me? Why is it, you know, we had a discussion with Brian and then we had a discussion with Ang Court, right? That, uh, if you are successful, what will you be able to do? I didn't hear you properly, Professor. What, what will I? I think why it's important is because blockchain is the future techniques which can be used in very uh, in many areas, and we can use uh, we can leverage smart contract to implement the many functions like trading without truly buying this stuff. And this is why it's important. So if we can, we can do a uh, such an analyzer as this project is go is going to do, then we can maybe maybe we can we can um, truly in, uh, use it in the real world and make a, a great profit from it. I think. So you're building an analyzer. Yes, to of contracts for for um, for for really? predict there's there's uh, for predict their price or, or about the or the status they are yeah right now, right, uh, right nobody right now does this right yes nobody... yeah uh, yeah what zane said was that there is no um a freely accessible platform that's able to do this that's able to let you like uh, characterize the state of a smart contract or smart contracts that are being traded so it would be something interesting. It is a lot of work clearly because you have to do a lot of groundwork in terms of just truly understanding the, the technology as well. Because from then on, then I think you could be able to do a lot more. So yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting project. It's been a lot of, it's been a steep learning curve as, they, as the sponsor also said, that it's always a very steep learning curve when you start introduced to the material. Yeah, great. I think Stephen, uh, Brian and I and Yuran as well have been on the call. I think we've, we've managed to, to stay consistent and just talk and teach through the learning process. How is it working with Ethereum? I think it's pretty good. Uh, Zane is very helpful and he keeps... Um, Zane, who is our sponsor and... Is he a sponsor? Well, he works for... Um, okay, so... He works with... Uh, a little... So he's helping us to figure out how to solve some problem we met during the project and and also he gives us some insight about how the blockchain works and we can we can uh, maybe we can leverage that to uh, build uh, to use those knowledge and create something interesting so what do you think yeah i think i i totally agree with what stephen said um He's spot on on that. I think uh, there's there's 
given where the future is going with blockchain, we we had a we had a very sweet position to actually uh, learn something meaningful in this particular project that we can apply going forward. Given the decentralized finance and all that's happening, really, I mean, I'm sure you guys probably heard of the central bank tokens that are being introduced. I know China has actually introduced a token that can actually work offline as well, which is pretty much mind-boggling new concepts that I think, you know, it's, it's interesting just learning about currently and seeing in which space we can be able to contribute in there. Yeah. I mean, th this is a case where um, you, if, if, if you're working on a different project, and as the theater comes to the, the the semester comes to an end, and if you have interest, I think you want to um, contact these guys so that you could, you know, uh, uh, learn on the way up, so that you could take over sometime in the spring. And the reason you want to do that is because uh, we're working with ETC Labs, and Elizabeth uh, Zane is from um, what is he CMU or something? Yeah. Carnegie Mellon. Yeah. Um, and and um, and Elizabeth uh, manages ETC Labs. She's also responsible for all of the incubators of companies. Right. So she knows lots of people. And again, as I said before, it's nice to be on the project. You're going to learn, you know, a bunch of different things. How to present a project. Uh, to explain that's the reason why I, I want to people bring people over here so that they learn how to explain what is it that you're doing quickly right? because people want to know what are you working on and you got to make it very clear right this part of the learning process but more important then you develop contact with etc labs they know lots of different i mean it's a it's different type of companies mostly startups but lots of contacts there and if they don't know that you exist, they're not going to talk to you. So as soon as you can, forget the capstone, think of it as a project. You want to get on projects like Ethereum, um, Inca Digital, and uh, here's Brian. We'll talk about your project. Sorry, I was on a Go ahead, that's okay. Go ahead, explain yeah, me a little bit. Did too. we just start? Did we just start? No, we, no. we kind of started, okay. but I want you to give them a vision of what Ethereum is about and why it's important. Have you, you, did Mattel already go? Yes, he did. Oh, okay, yeah. No, no, um, so my vision with Ethereum, I guess our vision is the right thing to concern. say. I want to talk about the concern. The concern, all right, yeah. <laughs> so in essence, everyone can hear you. All right, good. Um, so what I envision this project to be is, and as our sponsor explains, kind of the first open source smart contract analyzer. Um, and I'm not going to get into the details of what smart contracts are and how that all works. Right. In essence, it's like, it's the, ba it's like, it's the, it's the backbone of a crypto asset, which is like a stock, but like in the crypto world. Right. So you have your tokens and you can analyze these things just like you can any other equity. Um, and if we can build models to somehow predict pricing um, and kind of, almost apply a very empirical um, statistical approach to it, there's some arbitrage or some alpha that can be generated. Um, in essence, what my concern is, as Professor mentioned, right, if we write an open source um, procedure, open source code to model these assets, these crypto assets, to, to first of all, clean the data, model it, and then generate returns, um, I don't want to just throw this up on GitHub and be like, here's, here's the way to go print a lot of money in crypto, right? So we want to kind of protect our intellectual property and these models that we create, right? Goldman doesn't just like go publish their um, alpha generating formulas or AQR doesn't just go tell you how their algos work. Um, so that was kind of my concern. Correct. Hopefully that didn't repeat and or no, add no, it to what has been That's said. But up because we addressed it, it was an important project. And it's important because, you know, if you're actually successful, right? Okay. Very good. And I was telling people that uh, if they are interested in this project at some point, that they should get in touch with you in the next week, but towards the end of the semester, beginning of next semester, so that you could uh, help them as well. 
it's not easy. There's a lot of technicality. Lingo, Mitsella, Steven, can, we probably spent a month figuring out how this whole world operates. And to be honest, we still continue to learn. I don't know everything. I don't think any of us know everything. So um, there's a lot of learning yeah, great. To, to be done. Good. Learning is good. Can't go wrong. Sorry, man. That's okay. All right, uh, since we're out of schedule here, let's talk about AEDC. Who do I have on the AEDC here? Michael. Ben. And that was Michael. Uh, who else do we have? Oh, well, I'm also. Yaren. Yaren, yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead, yeah, why don't you talk that. Tell a little bit your story. Now, the reason, the reason I'm asking you to tell the story over and over is because at some point you're gonna to have to do it, right? I wanna make sure, I wanna have, I'm gonna have an IAC committee presentation at some point, and I want you to be, uh, uh, yeah, you're presenting to a bunch of other students, so you could say, you know, things that probably don't sound right for the time being, but you've got, and, and as people talk, you know, there's a lot of work to do at that end. So you need to get as sharp as possible and explain as if you were to explain to a job interview or to the IAC members, which they're going to be the next stage. So that's the reason I'm asking you over and over to present, to present, to present, to present. I don't want you to, because the, the issue with quants is that there's this notion, right, that you're just very smart. But then when it comes to explain your project, nobody understands you. And that has to, we have to get away from that, from, from that thought. Um, so, uh, Yeram, why don't you give a feel for people that don't know as to what this is all about. Let me get to my cone. And Z1 is in there, in that one where she's here. And let's hear from Ben in his vision. And um, I'm gonna pick on Ramos again. Uh, okay, let's, let's, let's hear from you a little bit. Um, I just joined this project during the summer. So I know Kai and his team also been doing this for over a semester. They've been doing research on the opportunity zone fund. Basically, the idea is that the AEDC, they wanted to fund, a, um, to build an investment fund where they invest in distressed areas and build, build shell buildings to, to attract those manufacture, smaller manufacturer companies to settle in and prop. So the investors in those funds do get the benefit of, um, they do get tax benefit. I won't, I won't go into details to explain what are the tax benefits. Basically the people at AEDC, they want to explore this opportunity and what we are doing is we're sort of acting as an advisor to AEDC. Finally, um, possibly we are going to build a pitch book where we need, we need to attract future investors to invest in, in this thing. The idea we have is that we might have an um, umbrella organization and we have the uh, real estate part and we have the um, the VC part where investors also can maybe have a slice of the profit from the manufacturer, the growth of the manufacturer companies. And we probably will also have a corporation where they, the, the investors can invest in the operation. So there are many, uh, many aspects of this project. Um, not right now, we are still figuring out the timeline and what AEDC want and what AEDC can do in this. We are also consulting other experts on 
real estate on the on their legalities. So basically, we are right now we are awaiting their answers. But for as students, we can we can find our interest in this project. Like, if you want to model the real estate or if you want to model the VC part. So basically we are having a true product that may, might go in launch and then, yeah, that, that's, the, that's a picture. Can anybody hear me? We're coming, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Benny's gonna talk about what he wants to do. Uh, so hey everyone, I'm Ben. I'm going to be joining the ADC project this semester. Um, you're on give a good overview, but I think one of the things that our sponsor sort of addressed to us was um, sort of modeling out the returns um, this semester. So part of the project is sort of seeing how the new tax code affects uh, what the investor returns would be. So one of the big projects for the semester would be modeling out the returns um, under the new 2017 tax code versus um, post the expiration of that tax code. Um, and then the other thing would be um, modeling out the different investor returns based on like what the lease payments would need to be for a company who would be moving in. Um, so that's sort of what drove me to this project is sort of the cash flow modeling and, and things like that, sort of like a corporate finance type um, role that I think is pretty interesting. What else do I have? Z1, are you on this? Um... Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Go ahead. Oh, actually, based on what we are working on, I which is waiting for the agency's opinion. But I think, um, but I think in the next step, I can uh, follow, uh, catch up with the Scott to like um, get more comparable data from the coaster and to get deeper in the cap rate calculations. And also, I'm also interested in the portfolio management which I think we still need to wait for their, their answers. Yeah, the only thing is the portfolio management and the modeling is okay, but right now, when I spoke to, um, when I spoke to, to John, what he was thinking is he wants us to put together some sort of a pitch book, right? About the building what the building plan would look like, what the land would look like, and when, what, what type of investor we should go after. Oh, so like the pitch book is only for the building? It's No, it's all three. Oh, okay. All right, so um, I don't know if Mike is back or not, but um, Michael Nelson. But basically, uh, and Ramos, maybe that's something you could get involved because it doesn't, uh, it could be interesting. So basically saying, well, I, I, you know, show me a, you know, put together a pitch book for me that I would basically, what it would look like to put the building together, what it would look like to put the land together and what it would, in a pitch book format, obviously, and how to attract the investors. The thing with this project, no coding involved yet. It's a, it's a, purely financing uh, vehicle potential. The advantage, it's a little tougher because, you know, where do we go with this, you know? Um, but the advantage is that it's a real product, ultimately, um, if it comes to, um, if it comes to fruition. All right, not much to say on this one then. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, the final one, Inca Digital. Who do we have on Inca Digital? I'm on that. Mike, are you on? Yeah. So Mike, uh, Mike,
Mike, Ben, uh, Matsala, and Randy. So Matsala, why don't you start by telling us, and, and, and this one is, is really all about research and it probably, I don't know if it's a team thing, but you have to, uh, you, you come up with your own research, um, what you want to do, and then we'll share it with uh, Nick. You have to share it with Nick and he'll help you on what you need to get done. So, Masala, since you've been there the longest, why don't you tell us a little bit what your, what your research is about? All right. Um, Go, sir. It's a bit of, am I, am I audible now? Kind of, yeah. Um, so I joined Inc. during the summer, and the, obviously on the onset, the main thing was understanding what they offer. So Inc. has a platform called Splunk and Upana, but we're currently, I think, being given access only to Splunk. Uh, what Splunk is, is pretty much a data aggregator, a really smart data aggregator um, that helps you pretty much play around with blockchain. So my blocked cryptocurrencies, if you wish, and other networks, other um, currencies. Um, it's more like a Bloomberg terminal, for lack of a better word, or a, a Reuters or aggregating terminal. So what it does is you get the opportunity to actually delve in and work on what you want, I think, which is what's the interesting part of the project is. So for me, specifically, my project has been, so I come from a trading background. We do financial engineering. So I was pretty interested in saying, what how can I use this platform to probably create a dashboard that can actually help me um, discern lead lag signals in trading data or just a correlation analysis between trading pairs that I find interesting. So that's where I've been working on and I've been working a bit with um, Nicholas on the, Nick on that, just helping me get through uh, working on the platform. So that's where I am. And then hopefully with time, we'll move this on into uh, a dashboard on the system that I could actually uh, implement, hopefully. I know the other guys are working on natural language pro pro programming and sort of trying to get sentiment analysis from uh, Twitter data and stuff like that. So on a nutshell, you could do what you want with it. But I think initially I went with uh, the trading financial engineering approach just so that I could be able to get something meaningful quickly and then see how I can iterate from that. Okay, next. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, for my uh, project, so I've actually been um, communicating with Nick recently, and I have more of a financial background based on my work history. So I was thinking about incorporating kind of both a fundamental and technical analysis spinoff because the entire database has a plethora of transactions ranging from cryptocurrency to commodities um, and really everywhere in between. So I was pretty much playing around with the database and saw that you could actually query the search results so that you can search for social media posts, specifically those involving Twitter that mention specific keywords. So I've been talking to Nick and uh, what I plan on doing is searching for all Twitter posts um, those that are both positive and negative uh, sentiment wise that mentioned the keyword Bitcoin. And then he gave me access to uh, a few like instructional videos, um, specifically constructing uh, custom databases. And then I'm going to incorporate N terminal bot NLP and financial data and pretty much gather the candlestick prices of Bitcoin over the same time frame that I'm researching. And then create a dashboard that visualizes the results and pretty much implement linear regression to determine if there's any correlation between what people are saying on Twitter, the frequency of the Twitter posts, uh, mentioning Bitcoin in that specific day and the price movements. That's perfect. That, I think that sounds great to me. Uh, this is different. This is about sentiment analysis. Uh, believe it or not, in um, uh, Swiss Re, for example, this is more on the risk management side. Uh, Swiss Re have got people in Switzerland actually literally uh, looking for using sentiment analysis, you know, uh, for black and gray and, and uh, swans, right? Things that are going to happen in the future. 
And that's the thing that Nick is big on. He does a lot of, uh, if you look at his, uh, uh, his, his LinkedIn, he does a lot of research. And one thing he told me that if he finds, if you have something of interest, right, if it's a good research, he won't mind uh, help you publish it. So it's very helpful. Now, you have to keep in mind, he's director of research. He's director of research for a startup firm. He's available right now, but he's not, right? He doesn't work for the university. He might not be available forever. Maybe we have him through three months, four months, maybe six months. So if you have interest, right? Uh, that's a very neat, low pressure, uh, apart from if you're on the capstone, low pressure project because Nick is very helpful. He'll tell you what you need to know. They uh, he invited you, right, Mike, to the weekly, they have a, bi a weekly uh, session, right? Marcella, this is still going on, right? Yeah, so I believe then, it's every Thursday around uh, yeah. 1.30. Yeah, one thirty. if you want to know about the database, uh, it's a great way to learn about um, a blockchain, but without too much coding involved, which, you know, as you heard the other guys, you know, it's taking a lot of time. But then again, they're doing it for the capstone so they could be fully vested. But um, that I think has got some nice potentials because Nick is very enthused in working with us. I mean, I didn't realize, Mike, you reached out, you reached out separately to him, right? Yeah, we've been communicating over email. Yeah, and then if he's talking to you, it means you, something that could be of interest at some point. And you want to develop the network. Now, I don't want you all to like, bombard Nick with, oh, you know, he's not a technic, he's a director of research. So you have to be cognizant of his time, obviously. Um, but he hasn't complained to me about anything. So I'm, I'm, I let it go for now. So it's not an issue. But imagine if we had 30 students and they all call him up. Hey, Nick, uh, I need some help. He said, listen, I got, I got a job to do too. But right now, that's the advantage that you have, Mike, is there aren't that many of you. So you have the ability to get directly uh, in touch with him, which is always a good thing. Who else do we have on that team? Um, so I, I think I'm on it. Um, yeah, you are on it, Rankin. Yeah. So, um, I got started with it about two weeks ago. Um, and, uh, since then I've, uh, looked on the Splunk interface and, uh, I've just been looking at potential like, uh, research topics and a few that interested me are, like financial analysis of derivatives because I know that they pull information from like the Chicago Mer Mercantile Exchange and like Bitmax and uh, others and I could potentially look at like a statistical analysis of those um, but I'm also uh, interested in like risk management and like black swan events and stuff like that um, and I haven't gotten all that far in it because I've spent uh, over the past week, I've spent more time doing research for the factor modeling project. That's okay. Um, um, but no, that's okay. I mean, uh, I mean, remember you have time, so um, you know, take your time. I mean, Inka, he's not out there saying, you know, what are you guys doing? So if you have an idea, you come to him. But I think this would be a good project for you because it um, it gets you into this different world, right? Uh, I don't know where this thing this thing is going, but obviously they're getting funding. They're going to go public at some point. Uh, and I want him to take us along with him in some way or fashion. Um, I don't know. I think he's located somewhere in, uh, in the north. Um, he's in Denver. He's in a town. He's in a small town, in a village. He's in, he's in a village, literally, with 100 people. What? Right? Yeah. He's in a village near a lake. Somewhere. You mentioned it was, it was Canada, wasn't it? On the border near Canada, yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. This thing is virtual. It doesn't matter where you are anymore. Uh, Randy, okay, Mike. That's it? Okay. All right. So, next week, we'll have, uh, I don't know, um, uh, we'll have... Uh, Ethereum coming in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that they're going to come in during this time. When I mean Ethereum coming in, the sponsors. Uh, 
and when they don't, you update us where you're going. So it's going to be a little more entertaining. So we don't sit there for three hours listening to each other. I want to have other people coming in and let's see what this uh, ping me thing ends up being. But I thought it was interesting. Uh, and they're very excited about having us on board, but I'm not so, we'll have a call with them sometime. Um, Maybe I do it on Friday. Oh no, I can't. She can't. She, they're closed for. Uh, they are closed for uh, COVID nineteen. Anything else? Don't forget to send me your. Um... Professor. Yes. Uh, I have a question before you go. Do we yes. need to be in this meeting like every Friday, or do we only need to be there for our own projects? If you doing capstone you should be on in this meeting yes if okay. you're not doing the capstone mm -hmm. um depends uh, what else you're doing but you want to keep up with the you want to know what's going on right mm -hmm. um because again again um what i want you to do yeah i want you to do your capstone okay but that's 25 percent 75%, I want you to get as many of these projects as possible so these people know your name at some point while you're, while you're there. They don't have to hold you all. I mean, here and in your case, right, you, you, know, you can't do six projects. But I would like you to look or dabble in all six projects over the time that you're here so okay. that um, at some point something's going to hit. Right, and it's a lot easier for you to get responses from one of these people. Don't forget, you are getting, you're reaching out director of research, you're reaching out the founders, so pretty high up people. When they're going to be looking for jobs and they're going to be interviewing people, you know, you're you're there already. Everyone else got to send the resumes, like you know, uh, Marcella was there in New York, you know, with all these people trying to go after the same job. You don't want to be these people. You want to be the person that they call because they already know you and you don't have to show your resume. And that's only going to happen if you develop your network on your own. But if you don't, they don't see what you're doing, how, how you know, what value do you have? You, you, they have to be able to see you in action. So no, you, I mean, you're, you don't have to go into any of those calls, quite frankly. I mean, Randy needs to come to the call to the afternoon, at least between, uh, we'll, do the fall, the, we'll do the factor investing between 1.35 and two o'clock. I want him to be here for that. Then he could leave. He doesn't have to be all afternoon. But if he leaves and he doesn't know what's going on with Inca at 3.30, unless you're doing something very important, which is fine. But if it's just to hang around, I mean, you're here to study and get a job, especially in this environment, which is going to get very difficult. So yeah, you don't I have see. to cry. Okay. I see. Um, I just want to confirm. Yeah, is yeah. Inca gonna be here like for next semester as well? The the project. Because uh I because I'm not taking the capstone this, this semester, yep. but I want maybe in my future projects I want yep. to use Blanc or use the technology. Is it possible? Yeah, no, it is. I mean, uh, as long as I have his interest and have students involved. So then when this, when, uh, I don't know, Randy does his thing and he's finished or Marcella and they publish something or they say, okay, this, I mean, this, that thing is huge. So I don't think it could be done in one semester. But then when, the, when, when spring comes along, you say, I want to have this as my capstone. And probably at that time, you could do it one project, one capstone, because you'll have a better feel for what you want to do. Then yeah, sure. I mean, there's no reason why it's not available. Now, that's one project. Ethereum is a bit different, right? Because once they come up, I don't know, Brian, what you think, but if you do what you're supposed to be doing. Well, there's always room to add, right? Yeah, exactly. It's a library that has analytics, right? You can always add more analytics tools. So if you want to get with the Ethereum and, and Brian says, listen, I'm, I'm too busy, I can't do anything, then maybe, you know, you could, he could help you right, where you, you're still involved but more on a senior level because that's what I'm thinking ultimately. People that are doing the project right now, ultimately they move up and they still want to be involved because you don't want to lose a contact. And then the new people are coming in and you help each other 
So they have a more senior role because they've done the hard work already and then you come, on, you come up below them and they help move you up as well. Like you would do any regular job essentially up to the point where they actually get a job and, and, and move on. But so you want that flag, you want to be exposed to as many because that exposure, you're not going to get that at other universities. Not, not like that. You'll, you'll, you'll get uh, statistics, um, you'll get the stochastic calculus anywhere you want, but that Nick is probably not talking to a hundred universities. He's probably talking to us and maybe someone else. So it's a different, and I want you to get a full appreciation for that. Today we had a call, Mike, you were there, right? We had a call with uh, Pygmy, um, I mean, the the founders were there in this huge living room, right? I don't I don't know if they're related or not, but and they're on the west coast, and they got two other people involved for us to talk to. You don't get that level of access, and you want to use that as much as possible. It was definitely a very personal call. Yeah, it's good. I mean, they want to see what you could do, and not everybody's interested, maybe. And uh, they have a PhD working for them. And, you know, this is a small firm, so they don't want to spend too much money right now. But I don't know what this is going to develop. Kieran, what do you think? I'm a little confused uh, on some project, but I'll have to, like, find out later. I'm really interested in the Inca one, though. Uh, the one? You know, I'm, I'm really interested in the Inca, dig in, in the Inca digital one. I think it's a, it's a, if you're not a coding person, um, they could, yeah, I, I, I think it's interesting because they've done the coding for you by designing the, the front end. Now you will notice one thing. I always ask people, what do you think? Okay. That is a big thing in business, right? You always have something to think. If you're like, uh, if you don't, if you get caught like a deer in, um, in, the, in the lights, not the lights, the flashlights, Never do that. I always say, yeah, 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 I got it. I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm on top of things. Because that's some of the skills that you will be learning over the past uh, semester or two. Okay, so think capstone, but think uh, beyond the box a little bit now. Okay. And Kevin, so I have a idea. question though. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned like a pitch book. Is that part of the AEDC project? Which one? I'm not really sure. You, so you said something about like pitch book in the middle of the AEDC project. I'm not yeah, really is. sure it what is. it is. It is. Okay. Okay, yeah, guys. So, yeah, Ramos. Oh, no, no. Uh, it just Karen has a pr uh, question about the pitch book. So I was like hoping to explain. That right. is what that is what John wants. So right. next week, I'm going to schedule some time. Either next week he comes in or the week after. But we have to... Um, Talk about that. Yeah. Also about the time uh, of this meeting. Uh, I saw a different uh, a different email that you sent out. It says it starts at twelve thirty, but no, it's one thirty. Well, it starts one thirty five to uh, four o'clock. But I think uh, since we don't have anyone talking, and but next week uh, or the week after, we'll have this guy at three thirty. Okay. Maybe I move things a bit tight, um, but as a project develop, you're gonna have more and more and more things to say, and I'm gonna have more and more speakers. So, and if I had big uh, ping me, I don't know, I put them at uh, one o'clock. You know what I mean? Yep. So uh, we'll see. Stay loose. No problem. Thank you're you. You're not doing else. You got at home anyway, so I mean, most of you, <laughs> except Brian and Jordan and Ben. Okay, guys. All right. Thank We're you so done. much, Professor. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, thank you.